Hi guys, today we are with Mihir Jain. He is a final year biotech and biochemical engineering undergraduate from IIT Delhi. He has interned abroad twice, once in Taiwan and once in Vancouver. Also, he's done projects in various fields ranging from biotechnology to electrical engineering and computer science engineering and will soon be pursuing an MS in computer science from University of California, San Diego. Let us know more about his research. Right, so uh, when I joined IIT Delhi, the main purpose of joining IIT was because it was it had the brand name and not necessarily because I was coming to biochemical engineering. So uh, my initial plan was to try to get a department change which did not happen, fortunately or unfortunately. And when I came to second year, there was this whole buzz around campus that you get to go on a foreign intern at the end of your second year. And I that's what I heard and that's what I kind of fell for. I'm mean, not not fell for, but that's what my main motive was to just take on an internship. I did not think of it in this way that I'll get to do a project or whatnot. So I just applied for internships and I at the end of my second year I got got a chance to go to Taiwan and I went to National Tsinghua University. So uh, like I said I never really had thought about it in terms of doing a project. It was just about getting an internship because there was a buzz around campus. So when I went over there I was of course nervous but I I mean so I went over there and I was really really lucky to get a, a professor who was more than willing to help me because at the end of the second year we had hardly done any biochemical courses so I did not have a lot of knowledge beforehand but he really helped me understand things from the ground up and his research team his PhD students were really really helpful again and all of them would give me personalized time personal time and would try to uh, make sure I understood what work they were doing before they actually gave me work and when they eventually gave me some work they made sure it was some I mean, it was a good amount of work and not just to make me do some labor work. So I did feel a sense of responsibility and also I felt that my work was having some sort of an impact in that research. So it was very cordial and it was, I never felt that, I mean, I was learning at the same time and also contributing in some way. Now coming to third year, similarly, I applied for internships and this time around I got an internship in a comp- healthcare company in Vancouver in Canada. And because this was a company, not exactly a research laboratory, uh, the atmosphere and the environment was very very different so earlier in Taiwan it was a research team where you would come and it was a lab like a small room about I mean just a small room but in Canada it was a proper office so I was I was a student while everyone else was an actual I mean they were, they had a job over there so one the first thing was I was I mean I didn't have anyone of my peer group or there was no there were no other interns so and they were working on cancer and they were trying to they were handling proper cancer data to uh basically provide some sort of treatment to cancer patients so it was a lot more I mean whatever I did would have some sort of major impact and it could even have a negative impact so it, ha- it that meant that I had to really 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 be on I mean I had to really be particular what I'm doing and what I'm contributing and it also meant that I had a lot of responsibility and I could not afford to just be I mean just laze around or not actually be really into the work that being said, in terms of the work environment, the people were, again, uh, again, since I was a third year student and I was an intern, whereas they were proper recruits, they had they knew that I was at, there was a lot of knowledge gap between me and them. So, again, they took extra efforts despite being proper recruits. They took efforts to explain things to me. Uh, as I was part of the computer, the bioinformatics team, they would, we had a weekly, te- early every morning we would have a 10-minute meeting called Scrum where everyone spoke about what they did the previous day what they planned to do and how the work was going so me as an intern they would also ask me questions as to what did I do the previous day what I was going to do today which really really meant that I was they really considered me a part of the team which was very it felt really good and really I mean feeling is one thing but it also meant that they really depended on me to give the solution so it in terms of I mean it was not exactly research it was proper work there's a difference but it was a good experience in terms of learning and I really felt involved and responsible for my actions so yeah right. so um, how exactly do you think we should go about seeking into uh, research internships or internships in general so could you comment on how you went about that okay so whatever knowledge I got was through my seniors so like I said the moment I entered second year all my seniors told me that you're in biochemical engineering and that's mostly research oriented field so you should apply for interns because and it has a lot of scope outside India so the initial thing was that there's something called QS rankings every university is rated and there are multiple rating ranking groups but one of them is QS so the initial tendency is you google you just you just go through the list of rankings I mean the, 
the universities how they are ranked and everyone in general has heard of MIT Stanford so your tendency is to go to those you know, go to those web page, go to their websites and just type let's say since I'm from biochemical engineering I would type MIT biochemical engineering professors so the entire list of faculty would pop up and I would and there will be 20 30 professors in each university for this particular field so then it would be just you would look up professors and the aim was to send out as many emails as possible and the email would basically consider some sort of introduction about you and your CV now at the end of your first year I've done nothing I mean, everyone on the same page and the only achievement we have is our JE rank which is again common across everyone so it's not a major accomplishment it's not going to separate you from the others and yeah so your CV practically contains nothing but and your cover letter is also going to be the same because everyone's going to talk to seniors and make the same cover letter but applying for internships in the first for the second year is more about I guess hard work and just applying regularly so again like I said you look up the faculty of each college and then uh, so there are two three things one is you email strategically which means that let's say if you're applying to a college in the US I would not send an email at 10 a.m. Indian time because mm -hmm. the professor would be it would be night time over there yeah. so this is general tendency that professors happen to be in their on their desk at 9 30 in the morning or around lunch time so let's say 9 30 a.m. in the US would be sometime in the night for India so I would email send that email out in the evening so that when so my sister, she's doing a PhD and she told me that she gets so many emails every day that she cannot see, reply to every email. But let's say the professor is on his desk and he gets an email, mm -hmm. it just pops up, he's more likely to read the email. So one is you email strategically. One second is that you need to, like I said, every university would have multiple professors in the same field. So then you need to just send out mails to two, three professors in the same department because again, professors might interact. It's not. I mean, so they might be like, "Oh, this person sent me an email." Oh, he also sent me. He also sent me an email, which means that they feel the student is just trying to, because you will tell them this professor that he li you like his work, and you tell the other professor you like her work. So it doesn't work that way. So you need to kind of send just a few emails in every university, and also the most important thing which people tend to ignore is that the cover letter that the, your, the content of the email should be sort of specific and not general. That I like your work is a very bad email versus I read your paper on X Y Z. And you just read the abstract, but you write this paper on X Y Z, and you tell me, oh, I read this paper on X Y Z, and you all, you all had done this work. You do not understand the work. He knows that because you're in second year. You know you cannot comment on the work because he's on a PhD, he's a professor. But you just took the effort to maybe read the name of the paper and wrote that in the email. But that being said, all of this is very log based. I mean, CGPA is one factor, but again, it's very very log based. So I know people have got who have really low CGPAs, have got a good internship and really great CGPAs and a they have not taken an internship so it's about more about dedication and hard work and to keep a track I would make a google sheet and the moment I send out an email I would write the date the university mm -hmm. and the professor's name and if he didn't reply in a month or two I would send a reminder so it needs to be managed very effectively because I mean that what that's what had worked for me so I'm not really sure and that's what I think would would be the way to send out emails how important do you think are exams like GRE, TOEFL, etc. And also, how common do you think it is to receive scholarships? Okay. So, uh, if you want to do a master's abroad, you would have, in, in the US, in the Europe, most universities in Europe and some universities in Asia, you would have to give the GRE. It's, it's, it is a requirement. It's not optional. And for TOEFL, it's, you, there's another example, exam called IELTS, which is, you can give that in place of the TOEFL. But you have to give the GRE. So it's very important that you give it. And regarding scholarships, most universities in the US do not offer scholarships, except let's say Stanford does have a very, very competitive scholarship where they do offer one. But let's say the government colleges, like let's say the one I'm going to, it's a government college, so they have an option of TA ship, just like we have one in IIT. So if you happen to secure TA ship, they would give you a good, they would refund your tuition fee, which means in a way it's a scholarship. And from what I've heard, it's it's not that hard to get TA, to secure TA ship. So on on the upfront they would not say they offer a scholarship mm -hmm. and masters are very expensive in general but uh u.s colleges would offer ta ship some of them and europe generally will offer scholarship but i guess the general tendency is to go to u.s anyway but yeah scholarships are not available in general okay okay so like i said at least for my first internship at the end of the second year i went there because there was this whole bus around campus that you, you need to get a foreign internship so when I went over there I did not really know what to expect and initially of course it was overwhelming one because it was a new place two new people and three I'm an introvert so it became 
complicated in a lot of dimensions but so initially i would find it really hard to even like i was given for the first time i was asked to read research papers to understand the professor's work which was something new for me then i was asked to learn something which i had not done before so i had to learn while i was reading the papers and also i had the thing that i need to complete it quick enough so that i can actually contribute to the work so it would become really hard to motivate myself to actually go to work i mean go to the lab and i had to talk to friends or family to just get up and go because it did not happen by my own motivation but at the same time there somehow comes a threshold where you just happen to understand the paper you just happen to like the work you just happen to understand some things and then after that it's just free flowing you just ha- you just start liking the work you are able to work so i guess the satisfaction you get after the whole struggle is really worth it so i remember particularly in canada i would get up early in the morning and i knew the work was very hard i was not able to crack a particular part of the work so i would call back home and i would just tell them can i just skip work and send out an email but they forced me to go and this happened two three times and only after that after i just sat on the desk and just tried to understand because i had to because i was in an office and there was no way for me to like not do the work i that guess thing just worked i mean that that thing just went through and that feels really satisfying so it's it's worth it um were the times when you felt you could not achieve your short term goals and like how do you manage to keep yourself motivated in such times okay so short term goals is still something which is a fancy way to put it but in general if everyone in iit every single student they will have times when they have a lot of work on their plate and that in a way is a short term goal lets you have assignments you have deadlines you have coursework you have majors so this might sound very philosophical but the whole thing i what worked for me was staying in one thing at a time so a friend of mine and me from biotech had gone for exchange and because the whole biotech curriculum is structured that, that you cannot do particular courses outside mm-hmm. when we came back in the seventh semester we had 32 credits to complete in one semester and at the same time we were in the seventh semester we, we were applying for uh, our masters we had to give the gr in the seventh semester and we had 32 credits so that became really really hard for us and, and it could have been easily very overwhelming and we could have just messed up the entire semester but we were the whole thing was that we would take it one day at a time we planned strategically that before minor one you give the gre before minor one minor two you do the application hunt and then you do the sop so and every day was just that today we get up we do this it sounds very very simple but there was no there's no other way to put it like so i guess when you're not feeling that you can do something just do what's on your plate at that point of time because there's no point thinking mm-hmm. so yeah all right So besides all of this uh, is there any advice that you would like to give the students of IIT right so i mean on the outside it might seem that i've done two internships and i'm actually going for a masters and it seems pretty sorted but it was not it was it's not as good looking as that so in general uh, like my cousin was in IIT and she told me that like before i came to IIT she told me that make sure you play one sport throughout your life or just be involved in one activity which is a part of other than academics and for some reason that never worked for me i did not manage my time effectively i would just i was somehow convinced that academics was the only thing i need to focus on and academics by academics i just mean coursework i don't even explore a lot of projects in iit and when you come to iit you need to realize that i mean there is so much happening over here and i think i'm not even explore 2% or 3% of it i mean so there's a lot you can do and it can start by just maybe playing a sport or doing some cultural activity just start with that what you like and you should be involved in at least one project or two while at iit because there's a reason why iit has a brand name and it's, it, it the tag would be associated with you but you won't be associated with the tag if you know what i mean so in general i feel i could have explored iit much 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 more i mean i know i've grown a lot because of iit what i've learned what i've seen and what i've done here but i know there have been much 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 more so yeah just try not to give academics too much importance of course it's important and of course cgpa matters and of course everything is related to cgpa but it can easily be managed in a short amount of time while you manage other things like sports or cultural activities or anything at all just something which is like basically a hobby but it's a continued hobby not that you do something when you're just bored it's something you take out time for so and also do some projects because iit is known for its research not for its i mean brand name the brand name is because of research so just try to go out and talk to professors and do something
all right so i think that was really helpful thanks again